Hey guys, uh, I want to make a quick video going over my engineering project. Uh, I actually just finished finals this week and I had a little bit of spare time here before I head back home. So I wanted to do a video going over this uh, boat I made. So every year the University of Central Florida has a uh, race, it's an engineering race, and it's called the Great Naval Orange Race. Basically what you have to do is in the middle of our campus there's a fountain, it's like a half circle and in the middle there's a fountain and the objective is to get the boat to carry an orange around the fountain to the other side as fast as possible so not, not just straight across I guess actually go around and come back like a parabola so I'm like okay um, obviously I wanted to touch on something new because I enjoy like you know exploring new things and problem solving so I decided to make a balsa wood hull which I've never done before in fact I've very rarely work, worked with balsa wood I think the most I've done also, what is, um, I don't even know if I've even used balsa wood for anything, maybe putting together one of those little like flyer airplanes or something like that, that's about it. So I went ahead and picked up some, let me grab this piece here so I can show you. This is the pieces I got it in, um, I believe it was eighth inch, yeah, or no, yeah, I got one piece of this eighth inch, and then I got three pieces of sixteenth inch. This is sixteenth inch right here. So you can see it's very, very flimsy stuff. Um, you know, if you've ever worked with balsa wood, you know. And this piece is, yeah, sixteenth by four inches by forty-eight. So got three of those and an eighth inch, and then I also got some. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Can't seem to find any pieces. Um, anyway, I got some aircraft spruce, like square. Should have a piece somewhere. Um, I must have fallen behind there. Anyway, um, so I used that for the formers, and there was actually quite a bit of research I did going into how to build this hull uh, because I've never done it before. So. I needed to figure that out and I stumbled upon this great form post. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. It was basically, I think it was titled Mono 18 Inch Hall. So, because I wanted a fairly small boat and I wanted it to be made of balsa wood and I wanted to know that it was like, you know, good, a good design because I'm not a boat designer. Um, so I followed this little, they had, it wasn't really a tutorial, it was more like, okay, here's what you need, here's the template for the parts and then, you know, to glue them together did that. Uh, in fact, I can put, I'll probably put some links in the description to the pictures. I took pictures at each stage. So like the first stage, I had formers. Uh, the second stage, um, you know, I, I did the uh, stringers. Um, I took pictures of all these progressions. I might, if I have time, I'll edit it into this video. And from there, you have to plank it. So you can kind of see I actually ground away this former here. There's another former up here. You can kind of see part of one here. Uh, there was a lot of modification done to get the electronics to fit in here afterwards, but um, basically start with the frame, then you plank it. So, uh, And you also start with the top. You, so you start with it laying upside down like this with the two top pieces. You build the formers off of that, and then you do the sides, so along here, and then you do the bottom. Um, so, did all that, sanded it down, smoothed it out, you know, filled it, and then I fiberglassed it. So, picked up, there's different weights to fiberglass. I got three quarter ounce fiberglass. This is little, little hobby stuff. It's, it's like seven bucks. And then I got a two part epoxy resin. And this is the ideal stuff to use for, um, Epoxy, or epoxy, uh, fiberglass. There is also polyester, but it smells, and I heard it's like not as good. Um, I mean, it's really a personal preference, but I was doing this in my dorm. I didn't really want this to smell like crap, so I picked up the epoxy. It's a little bit more expensive, but in my opinion, I think it's worth it. Mixed that up, did the bottom, uh, the sides, top, everything. Uh, got it on, then let it drop, uh, harden overnight. Did another coat. Uh, nice and thick, and the first, the first time I actually watered it down with the nature, so I could really absorb and permeate into the wood. Then I did another thick coat, and then spent probably 
um, two or three hours of sanding it down, make sure everything's nice and smooth. I was planning on priming it and painting it, but there was an $80 budget for this, and we were hitting that. So, um, anyway, so once I got the hull done, then it was time to put the uh, propelling system in there. And from the start, I knew I wanted to do a jet. So, as you can see there, it's not an actual prop. I had props, but I wanted to do a jet for a couple reasons. So you can see it, that's the uh, nozzle. And then there's the intake. Kind of hard to see on the camera here. There's the intake. I might be able to see through it. Doubt it. Anyway, uh, a couple reasons I want to do that. One, so when we're testing it, because we had to test it um, in the water, and also, you know, there's going to be kids running all over the place. Uh, you can pick this up, and you're not going to have to worry about your fingers getting chopped off. Literally. <laughs> uh, there were a couple groups that had, not just props, but, or propellers, they actually had props. Like airplane props. No no uh, cage around it or anything, and they're, they're just sitting there, like, plugging wires and letting it go, and they're, it's like, you know, hitting their fingers. This one group, I think every group member had to get stitches because they kept getting hit by the damn fan. Uh, so I definitely wanted to avoid that. The other main reason I picked the jet is because um, I wanted to be able to control it. So you can see my little servo there. And it's routed in right there with a little connecting rod. Um, in addition to that, it also has its, a built-in uh, stuffing tube. And the stuffing tube is basically what prevents the water from going back through the bearing into the boat. Um, I could have easily made one, looking on it now, but at the time of planning this, I, was, I didn't want to. I didn't even want to worry about that. So this was a nice all-in-one little jet. I believe it was the NQD. I think it was, yeah, NQD. Uh, 20 millimeter or 19 millimeter, so, something like that. If you type in uh, RC Jet, well, I've got to be correct there. Uh, if you type in RC Jet uh, Drive on eBay, pull them up, they're like 20 bucks. And you know, if you want to wait a month from for them to get uh, from Hong Kong, then you can get it for five. So pick that up, it's a little plastic thing, got a little plastic uh, um, prop in it. And Unfortunately, the couple, you can see that couple right there, the one that came with it, the screws were completely stripped. So, I mean, completely. And I, I have a couple different ways of, like, you know, uh, fixing, or not, not fixing them, but at least getting them out. You can use, like, a um, star screw, you can do it at an angle, a couple things. Nothing was, I mean, they were just circular. So, we ended up having to drill those out, and I had to get this new couple here. And it's a good thing that I did, because this couple... Uh, or the shaft that on the, that's on this motor is a larger diameter than the one that came with this jet. Uh, in fact, the motor, or the little jet thing came with the motor, which I will show you now. So yeah, uh, where is it? I left it on my desk over here. Alright, yeah, so this little guy, a um, little, little size comparison here. So, you can see, and I'm not going to do a test, but the noise difference alone between this motor and the one we got in there, this sounds like a little a little hum. This thing sounds like a industrial drill. <laughs> so, uh, this was actually from, I don't know, I've had, it, I've had it absolutely forever. I believe it was from some kind of RC car. Uh, I took the label off. It is called the Orion Method Brushed uh, SV2, and it's the 11 turn model. So basically, how RC motors work, since you're typically limited at s around 7 volts, the only other way to get power is to draw more current. Um, so, what you do in motors, when you're designing them, you want to get more power, you do less turns of heavier gauge wires, so you draw a lot more current and produce a, you know, stronger magnetic field. So that's exactly what this one does. And let me tell you, this thing draws a lot of current. So much, in fact, that I had to get a 40 amp solid state relay, do you see there, uh, to run it off the microcontroller. Because originally, I was working in the lab. I was talking to some other, they're actually seniors that are in there. They're working on some kind of hovercraft it was, it was essentially a go-kart, um, but it was an uh, Arduino-controlled hovercraft, or not hovercraft, um, drone recharging pad. 
So the idea was, you know, the drone would take off, the thing would follow it, it had solar panels on it, so it would charge up, it'd follow it, um, go to a certain point, stop, and then the drone could come land on it and charge. And so they were using, put my box back, but they were using these little MOSFETs that were actually rated for quite a bit. They were rated for, I think, 20 amps continuous. They were rated for 20 amps continuous. They are, uh, the model number is BUZ10, and they're rated for about 20 amps continuous, and they, oper they don't draw any current, so they could run off the little Arduino, or not Arduino, um, basic stamp. No problem. And I think their peak was like 50 or 60 amps. It, 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 was, it seemed plentiful for this. The problem was, if I have my paper, I'm sorry, I'm unprepared for this. Uh, here. Yeah, so I hooked it all up, got a little heat sink and everything. It didn't even start the motor. It started other motors because I, I ended up troubleshooting it, and it ended up starting other motors, but it wouldn't start this one. And the reason being is that. This graph right here, so this is transfer characteristics. So basically how a MOSFET works is you have your gate, your drain, and your source. And when you put an input, let me make sure I'm uh, telling this right. So you put an input into the gate, a small input, so usually positive, into the gate. And there is a difference between the gate and the source than the current flows from the source to the drain. So, with that being said, I was think I was just planning on using this as a switch. But these are transistors, so they can be used variably. That's why they're also using amplifiers. Um, so, I didn't really pay attention to this graph. I should have, but I didn't. So, the little uh, microcontroller I was using can supply five volts. At five volts. That's only giving you about 12 amps. So you see that that's the input, that's the output. Only gives about 12 amps on the output. So I'm like, okay, no problem. I got two batteries, and they're supplying seven volts. So if I bump it up to seven volts, that goes way off the graph. It goes off the graph, and it looks like it'll go to around 30 amps. Okay, that might work. So I tried that. Sure enough, it started it, but it wasn't quite getting as much um, power as I was hoping. If you're interested, this is the circuit I was using for that. Um, so it didn't, it wasn't turning it quite as fast as I wanted it to. Uh, it was still limiting the current substantially, which means that this motor draws more than 30 amps. <laughs> so there's this place in Orlando, well, this video's getting long, I hope you guys are still interested in this. Um, anyway, there's this really cool place in Orlando called Skycraft. And this place just sells surplus everything. I mean, uh, they got anything electronic you can imagine. Anything at all. Uh, they got scrap metal. I actually picked up, I'll do another video on it, I picked up a 15 kilovolt neon sign transformer, which is perfect for my fuser. Absolutely perfect. Uh, I'm going to bring that home with me when I go home for, I'm going to go home for a little bit in the summer. I, I'm coming back for classes, but I got about a week and go back, so bring that back, see what that could do. Um, anyway, so they had this relay. And this thing's rated for an absolute just ton of current. It, uh, it's rated for between a 1 and 100 volts. Um, a lot more than what I needed. Worked beautifully. 15 bucks. I think it's like a $100 part normally. This place had it for 15 bucks. And they had like a bunch of them. So picked that up, slapped it in there. Hooked it up, worked beautifully. So let me go ahead and slap the R. Uh, I'll keep calling this right now. The uh, basic stamp in here. So this is the basic stamp board by Parallax. Um, this was actually left over from my Bobot kit. I had a lot of extra parts from this, so I decided to use it for this boat for control. Let me focus here so you can see this. So, oh, the camera's about to fall. Not bad. Tripod's not the best. Okay. So, yes. Um, so I ended up, I was originally going to overvolt the little motor to 
give us some more speed. So we're going to overload that to 14 volts by hooking these guys up in series. But I decided against it because that would end up drawing close or probably even over 100 amps, or at least would try to uh, for this motor that I put in here now. So I decided against that, and plus I'd have complications with um, the microcontroller being compatible because it only, it's only designed to go at 9 volts. My little stand broke. Um, but yeah, this boat uh, has been through quite a bit. When we first got out for the first tests, it did a sharp turn to the right and just slammed into the wall. So you can see the front. It actually took a, quite a few hits on the front throughout the day. Um, big hit. All this stuff slid forward. Absolutely smashed that little former in there. So that had to be fixed. So that set us back. Um, which was not good. And then we did a couple, we did as many runs as we could. I think we did probably close to 10 runs. So we wanted to modify the code to get it to go around the fountain. It was all timing based. Um, did that, but we ended up running out of battery. So we had to call it short. And of course it was the night before, so there really wasn't anything we could do. Um, and the little screw on this motor, I was holding the motor mount, kept coming loose. So the night before I was like, okay, you know, I got some, uh, some extra Loctite. I'll just slap some Loctite in there. Well, we, we custom machined the mount motor mount out of plexiglass and I did not realize whoops go ahead and turn this off I did not realize that plexiglass or that um, Loctite dissolves plexiglass and plastics so I guess I should have known that but I didn't so we got out to the race the next morning or next afternoon and I did a couple tests. I did a test run at a, at a pond beforehand to make sure it was going straight because that was really the only problem we were having. It went perfectly straight. The code was all finalized, ready to go. You get out there, the motor comes out of its mount uh, because it dissolved half the plastic, so it broke. The force of this thing uh, broke it, um, and it basically just slowed way, 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 way down and cost us the race. So it's unfortunate because we were getting about. I think we were getting about 24 seconds around the pond. And I think the winning team was like a minute something. So, anyway, it is what it is. But I basically just hung around. I asked the guys uh, between heats, you know, hey, can I can I slap this in and uh, you know do some test runs with it? And like, yeah, sure. So it was fun. I had fun, I had fun doing this project. Uh, you know, you, you take what you uh, learn from it. Uh, okay, here we go. So here's my little microcontroller. Uh, I'm not going to hook up the uh, solid state relay just yet because it's like you can't even believe how loud this is. So there it is on there, and I'll um, show you the little little uh, thing turned in there. So there's the little servo turning the rudder. Build that. So that's just a little startup sequence I did. Uh, and then I had this little momentary switch here, and then we waterproofed it with just literally hot gluing a um, uh, plastic bag over it. And that goes like so. And the orange would go right there. So we had a little extra weight in the back, because you want the weight, you know, about a quarter of the weight in the back. Um, if it's sitting too low in the back, which it was when we were testing, it would start bouncing. Um, so we, we shifted the weight back, so when the orange was in there, it would sit just about where it needed to sit. So what, we, what you do, is you press this button, do the beep to let you know it's going, the motor would kick on at this point, and it would be about six seconds before the first turn. So there's the first turn, so that, that turned 90 degrees. Then it's another, I believe it was like five or six seconds, I, I modified it a bit, so I don't know what this one is. Yep, so it turns again, so now it's coming back. And it just does a straight turn, or just just goes straight for I think it stayed on for about 20 seconds, uh, just to make sure you know if it if it messed up it it still go. Um, that was it. That was our program. So that worked beautifully until the motor mount, mount broke. Um, <laughs> I mean, 
It's a shame that that did, because we would have definitely won this competition. Uh, but anyway, uh, another group I was talking to, there was some, uh, this guy I know from the manufacturing lab, they actually had a really smart system for theirs. They, they didn't use this board. In fact, they used the little uh, Texas Instruments when I have it here. Anyway, it has a built-in gyro in it. So it would actually, you know, you set it in the water, and it, it'd start that as, a, as its reference angle. So every time it turned, it would, like, it would detect that degree of turn, and it'd correct. So, you know, the fountain would hit it, and turn, and it would correct itself. Um, and then, you know, instead of just having the time-based turn like we did, it would actually just turn until it uh, reached the degree it needed, and then it, it'd correct itself, which was really cool. I think that finished second or third, and that was going really slow. It was an air-powered one, like an airboat, and just had a little rudder with the microcontroller. But that was a really cool idea. I wish I would have thought of that. I'm pretty sure that the Parallax has a um, uh, gyro kit, and we were allowed to use the microcontroller without any additional cost. So that would have, if I would have, uh, you know, ever thought of that, that would have crossed my mind, or someone told me that, this, that would have been awesome. But um, I was planning on making this an RC boat after this, but I, uh, you know, it's been through quite a bit of like impacts everywhere. There's actually two main cracks in the hull. There's one here. You can see that? Not too bad. It's not leaking, but it's definitely noticeable. And then while I was holding it here, I felt another one on the bottom. Yep, yeah, right here. I'm gonna get the angle right so you can see. Yeah, this is, oh, there's one here too. Yeah, you can see that indentation. And then along all, all the sides, those all got scraped just absolutely the hell. Um, in fact, it went right through the fiberglass. Yeah, the fiberglass is coming off right there. Which is a shame because it was all one smooth coat. If I would have painted it, it would look like just one solid piece of wood. Um, you can see there. That just got completely destroyed. But anyway, so this is probably going to be a shelf piece at this point. Um, might actually go and do that gyro just for fun, because I think someone was talking about doing an anonymous boat, or not anonymous, an autonomous boat for a, I don't know, some unrelated project. So I might might donate this to them. I don't know. I'll, I'll say I wouldn't mind seeing, uh, you know, running that with the gyro on it. I think that'd be pretty cool. But yeah, I think this is the longest video I've ever made. I can't believe I've like rambled on for 20 minutes. Anyway, that is the boat. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this, I'm sure there's going to be some UCF students watching this video uh, next year. If you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you stuck around for 20 minutes, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next video.